Hey. Hey guys, Key here from Kegland, I'm talking to you about two things. Firstly, we've got these thermo wells and also these temp twister cooling coils or heating coils. Basically, uh, these are things that you can use to heat or cool your fermenter or bright tank or something else like that. Uh, now they do fit uh, pretty easily into the tops or lids of the Firmzilla. You can also fit them into other things as well though. There's no reason why you can't put this into something like our stainless steel keg menters. We've got those in 29 and 58 litre sizes so you can fit them into the lids of those too. Anyway, um, yeah, I'll get into the process, uh, show you how we drill the holes, how we fit in the uh, compression fittings and uh, get these things onto the lids. All right, so on the Thermzilla lids, they're fairly easy to drill out being made of plastic, right? So they're an engineering plastic, so they are quite a strong plastic and glass reinforced. Uh, so when you drill them, they do drill out with pretty clean holes. Now I've got a step drill bit here. As you can see, it just steps up from, you know, 12, uh, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 millimeter and so forth on here. Uh, basically all the common sizes we have for, um, you know, beer brewing stuff, pretty much this step drill bit will do the job. Uh, so I want to put a thermo well on this one. Uh, so I'm going to go down to like the 12 millimeter hole here. So I'm just going to, you can see also on the on the underside of the lid, we've actually got a little dimple there and that's actually so it centers the drill bit, makes it easier for you guys to drill out. Now I highly recommend you guys doing this on a bench, but look, I'm in a studio here, so I'm just going to basically do this in front of the camera. Um, so I'm just going to push this into this like that. Alrighty, now once I get to the 12 mil, the quarter inch thread that I've got on the thermo well is actually a fraction larger than 12 millimeter on this step drill bit. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wobble the drill bit around a bit in a sort of circle like that, just to ream it out slightly more like that. And the other thing that I'm gonna do, cause I'm gonna insert the, uh, this, uh, this fitting from the top of the lid like this, you see now it's yeah it's just a nice tight it's a really snug fit now actually in that in that sort of just a, over 12 mil hole the other thing i'm going to see see this o-ring here i'm actually going to use the step drill bit to make a slight chamfer in this top edge so the o-ring will more nicely sit into that as well so i'm just going to get the drill bit and almost push it half into the 14. and you can see there what I've got is a nice little chamfer uh, on that on that hole edge there. So this O-ring here will just slot straight into there and push down. I've just got just the right amount of thread on the backside to fit the lock nut as well. So that's how to fit that up. I've got a little stainless lock nut here. We also have plastic ones available too. But yeah, that just goes on the back like so. And then our thermo well is uh, easy to fit, just pushing it straight in that hole. Now guys, if you have to drill out one of these four inch end caps, cause you want to put one of the temp twisters or for instance, one of the uh, temperature probes or thermo wells into one of these caps, I'll show you how to drill them out. Basically you want to get a vise like this. Now you can do it without a vise, it's a bit more tricky. Um, now I've actually got some cardboard on the jaws of the vise so it doesn't scratch the, uh, the end cap here. I've made a little mark on the end here where I want to drill my hole. Look, if you had a center punch, I'd do that. Um, I'm just going to use, uh, well, some people may not have uh, actually a proper cutting lubricant, but to be honest with you, WD-40 works pretty well. And uh, if you just find some other type of oil you might have lying around the house, that'd be better than nothing. But look, uh, WD-40 is actually not too bad as a cutting lubricant. So I'm just going to use a little bit of that. Now the key is use lots of pressure and go really slow. So if your drill's got a couple settings, go on to the slow setting. This has got one and two, so it's actually got a gearbox in here. Um, so I've got, got it on the one setting. Now I'm gonna really push hard. I'm gonna put my shoulder right up against the butt of the drill and I'm gonna push really hard. Notice how once I got all the way through the hole to the right hole size, I then flipped the, uh, the end cap over to the other side and attacked it from this side just to put a little bit of a chamfer. One of the nice things about the step drill bits is as they jump to the next step, the next step will then cham chamfer the edge. So you get a nice cut from both sides. Now when you get one of these 60 centimeter thermo wells, you'll notice that one end's actually capped off, of course, and the other end's open. It looks a lot like a dip tube, so don't get confused with the dip tubes that we have for corny kegs on the website as well. They're a different part altogether. 
Um, so with these, because they're 60 centimeters, they may not necessarily suit your particular type of fermenter straight out of the box. So uh, what we also have is these little pipe cutters, and I'm gonna show you how to use these as well. So if you don't mind the size of the, the long 60 centimeter one, it actually works really well in the 50 liter Firmzilla or some of the larger fermenters we've got. But if you've got a short fermenter, you might actually you know, have it only go down to there and have this bit sticking out the top. The other thing is if you have it a little bit long, it also can be a little bit handy because what you can do is put your probe down the middle of this bad boy like that. So this is actually the probe for our temp control box. So there we go. So just put that right down to the bottom. And what I can do is I can actually put this up and down and actually maneuver it through this quarter inch duotite fitting here. So I can actually slide it up and down inside the duotite fitting and that way, no matter if I've got a very low li li liquid level and I can, I can put it right down to the bottom, or if I've got a high liquid level, I can sort of maneuver it so it's approximately in the core or the absolute middle of the fermenter. So that's kind of handy. Anyway, so using this pipe cutter, I'm gonna show you a couple things. Firstly, uh, if you wanna put a small score in the stainless, that can sometimes be handy if you wanna mark an exact uh, location in the tube. So let's say also, uh, I'm using quite high pressures inside a fermenter, for instance, you might find that the tube can start to gradually push itself out like that. So this is one reason to put a score in there. Also, if you wanna yeah, mark a specific location on there, so you, you, you know when you've got a very dark beer and you can't see through the beer and you can't see where the probe's sitting, you might wanna actually do this. Um, so these uh, little pipe cutters, all you have to do is like, give it one little tweak in like that, give it a rotation and then give it another little half turn, give it another rotation like so. Uh, and then as you keep doing that, look, to actually just make a small score, about two or three turns is enough. Push it nice and firmly, and I can see it just sort of clicks into place. I'm not sure if you heard that little click, but it just clicked as the stainless teeth uh, fell into that score mark, just where, it, uh, where I made that score mark with the cutting tool. Now when you're fitting the temp twister into this bad boy, it's very much the same process as fitting the thermo well, except we just have to drill a slightly larger hole size. So the thermo well is 5 16th or eight millimeter, so it goes into the slightly smaller duotite fitting. Now with the temp twister, this is a 3 8 or nine and a half millimeter, essentially uh, diameter bit of stainless steel. So it takes the larger fitting and the thread on this bad boy is a uh, half inch. So we have to drill out a we have to drill out a 22 millimeter hole in the lid itself. And then what we do is we get the duotype fitting, making sure we put the seal this time on the inside. So the seal is up against the face of the duotype fitting there, or the, the ledge on the duotype fitting there. I'm pushing the duotype fitting in from the underside, and then I'm doing the nut on the outside this time like that. So that's how the duotype fitting works with the 3 8 tubing. Now we might actually have some slightly differently designed fittings that uh, will be more suitable for this in the future, but for the moment, yeah, these are the ones that will do the job. So once I've got the two duotype fittings in there, <clears throat> the same thing happens with the, uh, the cooling coil or the temp twister. We basically put that into the so once you've got the temp twister fitted to the lid of your Firmzilla, you can just drop it in like so, and then push the lid down. Then put the coupling ring on like this. Now the other thing that I wanna show you is I've actually got a couple score marks right here at the top of the coil. So once again with the pipe cutter, just 15 millimeters from the top of the coil, because I know that's exactly the, uh, the distance which fits these duotites perfectly. And that way what I can do is actually just use these two elbow duotite fittings on the top there. And so now I've got the duotite fittings on here and I can push my 3 8 tubing straight in here so I can fit my coolant going, or heating liquid into this side and out of that side. So Bob's your uncle. Thanks for that guys, hope you enjoyed the video. We've got lots of other cool new accessories that are gonna be coming out which are compatible with the Firmzilla in particular. Got lots of other cool new stuff coming out in general. So if you want to hear about any of the cool new stuff, definitely subscribe to this YouTube channel just down the bottom right hand corner there. The other thing you can do is join our new Facebook community group. So we've got a community group where just uh, guys like yourself are on there sharing tips with each other. We also give out discount codes and other cool stuff like that. So definitely sign up to the group. All right, see you later and hope to see you next time. Bye.